Winter turning to spring, trees in bloom. We're here to talk about one of the many ways you can support the successful pollination of your fruit trees. Uh, fruit trees need winged insects to pollinate themselves. Some trees are self-pollinated, say apricots and peaches. You just need to move pollen from one flower to another on the same tree. Some are cross-pollinated, like apples, pears, plums, and prunes. You need to move pollen from a flower on one variety to a flower on another variety. And the standard way of doing this in orcharding is with Apis mellifera, the European honeybee. Apis meaning uh, bee in Latin, mellifera meaning sweet, as in if someone has a mellifera's voice, yeah, it's sweet. Um, and that's all well and good, and you may go that route. Um, even if you have a small orchard, you can usually contract with beekeepers, and they're more than happy to uh, have you pay them a fee for them to put their bees in your orchard for a short period of time during pollination. You get fruit, they get honey. Uh, so that's good. If you live somewhere, and if you live, say, within two to three miles of where bees are being kept, that's generally considered the range of the European honeybee. But late break and research says, nah, it may be up to seven to 10 miles. So um, that's living in proximity to bees, bringing bees onto the property, keeping bees yourself. Again, I'm meaning the honeybee here is one route you can go. Certainly you'd want to do everything you could do to promote uh, native pollinators. And there are quite a number of native bees. Um, but that's a topic for another day. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about right now is the bob, the blue orchard bee, or the mason bee. Its uh, Latin name is, the genus is Osmia, and the, uh, we use the western species. There's a western and an eastern species, uh, and we use Osmia lignaria. And uh, it's not actually native to California, uh, and there is a California native Osmia species, Californica, as you might suspect. Uh, and the trouble with that species is it doesn't come out till later in the spring. It's really great for pollinating uh, late blooming raspberries, strawberries, and your summer crops like melons and such, but not so good for early blooming spree, uh, fruit trees. So we're using this uh, species of western uh, mason bee. Um, they are a solitary bee, but they're a bit gregarious in the sense that they don't mind being around other bees. Some uh, bees are actually fiercely territorial. These fellows, or these bees, are pretty docile. They are pretty much non-stinging. To get them to sting you would be quite an effort. Uh, so um, how do you get started with, with these mason bees? Uh, you can order them online. They come in a little box. They come uh, in, the uh, in, in the form of a cocoon. Inside each cocoon is a mature mason bee. Uh, and you put them out in the spring into the orchard when temperatures warm up, uh, just prior to at the beginning of bloom. Um, and they're readily available, as I said, from different nurseries online. Um, and then I said, put them out. Well, what do you put them out in? I have an array of possibilities here from the uh, uh, high-end uh, Ritz-Carlton down to the uh, backyard B&B &B or camping out. So let's look at this. This is a bee house, a bee hotel, if you will, and it has a nice uh, metal roof to shield it from rain. And this is one that I've taken the innards out or the top off. And what it consists of is 128 hollowed out uh, tubes here. And I'll open one up here and you can see the configuration, the recesses like that. Um, and what you do is put this in the tree. Now, when I talked about the range of the honeybee, say two to three miles or even greater, these critters are not so rambling. They really have a range of maybe as little as 30 to 50 yards. So you have to put them uh, that close in the, in the orchard. Um, the mason bee is probably a more efficient pollinator than the honeybee. 95% uh, of their trips 
involves successful pollination, whereas the honeybee may be as low as five to ten. Um, the mason bee will fly and pollinate at much lower temperatures than the honeybee. You're not really having much activity with the honeybee below 60, 65 degrees, but the mason bee will fly down into the low 50s, even upper 40s. The mason bee will fly on days like this where the winds are 15 to 20 miles an hour and the honeybee not so much. Uh, so it's a tougher, tougher uh, breed of bee. Um, so uh, you take your housing unit, let's look at the possibilities. You can buy in these beautiful bee hotels. You can make your own. Uh, this is a little DIY thing. I've just taken a 2x4 and drilled out recesses here, a little less than a half an inch. And I just slide it into a little this drainage tubing here and I can hang it or tie it into the tree. And we can step it down a notch. I just took some prunings and a few pieces of bamboo here and bundled them together. And the mason bee likes any kind of nook cranny cavity it can find. I've even seen them nesting in little eaten out holes from carpenter bees in siding or in the garden gate. And so they can move in here and have a successful housing unit. So you buy in your cocoons, you pick your housing unit, you set it out in the trees, and you place the bees into the housing unit. I'll do that in a few minutes. But here's what happens when you do that. Um, I'm going to uh, take, well, let me just demonstrate right now. These just came out of the refrigerator. Keep them cool. They're cold-blooded. Uh, as it warms up, they should too and become active. So here is maybe 30, 40 cocoons of the mason bee. And I'm going to, over here on the tree, simply slide them in here and let them do their thing. I've got a little bit of tape on the bottom to secure them to the bottom so uh, they don't blow out like that. So you do that and then what happens? Uh, you sit and wait patiently. Usually within one to three, one to four days, the males will emerge, hatch out of the cocoon, emerge, fly out and hang out in front of the hive. Shortly thereafter, the females will issue forth. They'll mate, the males will die, and then the females get busy. They start pollinating. Um, one of the reasons that the mason bee is uh, so uh, efficient as a pollinizer is, uh, as opposed to the honey bee, almost every portion of their legs, abdomen, and head are covered with bristly hairs. So as they move into the flower, they just get covered with pollen. And uh, a lot of it transfers to the flower and succeeds in pollinating uh, the flower and you get a crop. Uh, but then they take pollen and nectar back to the housing unit, back to the hotel here, and they move into the, you'll see them going in and out. They come in head first and they'll lay, when they'll start to uh, accumulate pollen towards the back of one of these tubes. And when it gets big enough, when it's a finished pollen ball, then they'll go and get some soil or mud. And if you have uh, some really clay soil that's wet, put it near the hive. And then they take that and they partition off that single pollen ball with an egg that they laid in it. Uh, you'll see them going in head first and then coming out. Uh, in those instances, they're accumulating pollen and nectar in the pollen ball. Then you'll see them go in backwards. In that instance, they are ovipositing or laying an egg in the pollen ball. Uh, so they'll do that, and they'll probably have maybe 8, 9, 10, 12 chambers here, each with a pollen ball and an egg in it. And the females are active for anywhere as little as three, as long as six to eight weeks, but, uh, and then they die. So what happens is the egg in here in the tubes uh, hatches out, becomes a larvae, um, and then uh, eventually will uh, pupate, spin a cocoon, and mature. And so uh, when you get them in the mail or when they hatch out and become active in the spring, an adult will emerge from the cocoons. Uh, it's pretty easy, it's pretty low cost, and it's pretty low maintenance compared to managing the honeybee. Of course, you don't get any honey. Mason bees can determine the sex of their eggs. 
So they lay the females towards the back and the males towards the front. And the males are triggered to hash out first. Um, so they come out. But yeah, basically they eat their way through the little partitions of mud uh, and uh, get out and fly around. So, but yeah, it's, it's cool that they can determine the sex of their eggs and place the females in the back and the males in the front. So. I'm going to take these, it's probably, as I said, 30 or 40 cocoons here. Some are male, some are female. Uh, you want a slightly higher ratio of females to males. Uh, and I'm going to walk it over to the hive and slip it in. Again, I put a little tape, roll of tape on the bottom here to help secure it. So if on windy days like this, it doesn't blow away. Not too highly technical, but highly effective. <laughs>